All right, so in this video, we're going to learn some rocket science. Okay, but before we do, we got to talk about energy. Okay, so, so far we've defined gravitational potential energy as mgh. Okay, well this represents gravitational potential energy actually near Earth's surface. Okay, um, because g is relatively constant near Earth's surface. Okay, but if we're looking at the solar system and we're talking about gravi gravity on a larger scale, we can't use this equation for potential energy. So we only use this when we are near Earth's surface. Okay, and for all other circumstances, we have to use something else. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and derive that right now. So remember that gravitational potential energy is equal to the negative derivative of um, the force with respect to distance, okay? And so df dx, or you could use r there, okay? Well, the gravitational force is going to be equal to g m m over r squared. So we're going to integrate this from r, whatever position you're at, to infinity. Okay, and the reason we do infinity is because that's the when we would have the smallest possible force acting on something. Okay, and so we would integrate this. We can pull out g m and m, and so we get negative g m m in the integral from r to infinity of 1 over r squared dr. Okay, so we integrate this and we get um, negative 1 over r and we're going to evaluate that from r to infinity. Okay, and then we'll multiply that by negative g m m. Okay, well negative 1 over infinity minus negative 1 over r. Okay, this is equal to 0, and this is 1 over r. We multiply by that to g m m, and we get that our gravitational potential energy is equal to negative g m m over r. Okay, and this is what we'll use whenever we're quantifying the gravitational potential energy something has, this is what we're going to use. Okay, so how far away would you have to go from something in order to have zero gravitational potential energy? Well, the smaller r is, the more negative your gravitational potential energy gets. And so in order for this to turn into zero, we would have to make r be equal to infinity. Okay, so the point of this is that if you were to graph your gravitational potential energy as it relates to how far away from something you are, then the closer you get, okay, the more negative it gets, and it's always going to be kind of approaching zero. This has some important consequences, and one of them in particular is this. So, in order to escape the potential energy of a planet, or at least to have enough energy to escape a planet, you would have to have at least zero energy. Okay, because then you would be above this potential energy line, and that would mean you have enough energy to be free of the potential energy of that planet. And so um, when we talk about other kinds of energy, well, remember that potential energy is not the only kind of energy that something could have. So maybe something has energy that would be at this level, and the reason why is because maybe it has some additional kinetic energy. Okay, this becomes a really important conversation because we can talk about something called escape velocity, which is an important term for science, for like rocket science, because escape velocity is basically the velocity required to be able to escape the gravitational field 
of uh, some potential gravity source. And so this is why what it comes down to. It's basically the amount of velocity that you need to have based on your gravitational potential energy so that you can have a total of zero energy, which means you're moving fast enough to escape. Okay, so like if you want to figure out how to get a rocket to Mars, then you'd be using escape velocity to figure out how fast it needs to be going. Okay, so we're going to look at this question right here. We have a ball of mass m and a little m, and we're going to move one of them away from the other. Okay, and ask, does the gravitational potential energy of this system increase or decrease? Okay, well, if this is our equation for gravitational potential energy, and this is our graph, okay, what do you think? Is it increasing or decreasing as we move it away? The gravitational potential energy. The answer is that it increases because as we move this way, we have more and more and more potential energy. We're getting closer and closer and closer to zero. Okay, which means that negative work is being done because if we were moving this way, if we're flying this way, gravity is going to be causing us to slow down. Okay. Okay, so here's a question about an asteroid headed toward Earth. It has a speed of 12 kilometers per second relative to the planet, and it's going to have a distance, and it has the speed when it's a distance of 10 times Earth's radius away from the center of Earth. All right, and we want to neglect the effects of Earth's atmosphere on the asteroid. So generally, it's going to get slowed down from the friction there. And we want to find the speed when it hits where it reaches the Earth's surface. Okay, um, so this, maybe you're thinking like, I mean, this is a, an ener a question where we can use conservation of energy because we have a change in relative position to the Earth and we have velocity. And because of that change in position, the velocity will increase. Okay, and this is 12 kilometers per second, which would be 12,000 meters per second. Okay, we'll call, so RE would be our final radius, our, our final R. Our initial R is going to be 10 times RE. Okay, and so now we can do conservation of energy. So initially we start with some amount of kinetic energy and some amount of gravitational potential energy. <clears throat> At the end, we're going to finish with some amount of kinetic energy and some amount of gravitational potential energy. Okay, well we know what this is. One half times mv squared. We know what this is because we know the radius, so minus g m m over r on this side we have one half m v final squared and then minus g m m over r okay since the mass of the asteroid is in every part we can eliminate it so it won't matter how much mass it has okay in this particular question um and so we get one half v squared minus gm over r equals one half v final squared minus gm over r and we'll call this r initial and r final so from here if we want to solve for the final velocity we would add this to the other side and so we get the one half v final squared equals one half v squared minus gm over our initial plus gm over our final okay we can do a little more simplifying i'm going to multiply everything by two and i'm going to do some factoring so v final squared equals in this case v initial squared plus gm times 1 over r final 
minus 1 over r initial. Okay, um, and so let's remember that the radius of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6th meters. The mass of the Earth is 5.99 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And capital G is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Okay, before we continue solving, just made a quick mistake here. So I, one of the steps I had to do was to multiply by 2. I didn't do that right here. So anyway, we'll plug in these values. Um, our final would be the Earth's radius. That's how far away it's going to be when it strikes. And then our initial is going to be 10 times Earth's radius, or 6.37 times 10 to the seventh. Okay. Also, mass of the Earth is actually 5.98 times 10 to the 24. <clears throat> okay, so let's plug those values in and solve for V. Alright, you're going to find that V final is equal to about 16,000 meters per second. Okay, so it increased by about 4,000 meters per second as it was falling. Okay. Now, why, why do you think that when we do this equation, we can't use for gravitational potential energy, why can't we use MGH? Well, the reason why is because G, in this case, is not constant. Anytime we talk about distances relative to Earth's radius, that's a pretty good clue that we're so far away that G is going to be very, very small. And so it does get larger as we approach, but it's very difficult to, I mean, it's basically the assumption we make when we use lowercase g is that we're close to Earth's surface, and so that since we're not, we can't use it. All right, the last thing we'll do here, this will be quick, is finding escape velocity. So remember that escape velocity is when we have enough velocity to escape the potential energy well. Okay, and then we can calculate this using energy. Basically, escape velocity is when we have zero total energy. So when our kinetic energy plus our potential energy equals zero. Okay, so that's one half mv squared for kinetic, negative g m m over r for potential, and we can solve this now for v. All right, that's one half mv squared equals g m m over r. The m's will cancel. We multiply by two and take the square root, and we get escape velocity equal to the square root of two g capital m over r okay